All right, so in this video, we're going to be looking at the properties of limits. Uh, these are, properties are, for the most part, pretty basic. Uh, there's not a whole lot of thought required for these. Uh, it's really these properties that allow us to do substitution. Uh, but we will take advantage of these properties because at times, some limits are easier to break up into pieces. Just usually not quite as, deep, as small a piece as what you're going to be seeing in these examples. So the first property of a limit is uh, taking the limit of a constant. So kind of graphically, it's the easiest way to see this. So I have a graph. Here's A. And this is the constant. The graph of C of a constant, remember, is a horizontal line. And it's pretty easy to see that as my x values are getting closer and closer to A from either side, that my y values are all staying the same, so my y values are approaching c. Uh, so it just means that if I'm taking the limit of a constant, it is the constant. So for example, the limit as x approaches 5 of negative 9, it's just going to be negative 9. Uh, next we have the limit as x approaches a of x. Uh, this is really the one property most responsible for uh, substitution. And so as we know, uh, our y equals x graph goes through the origin, has a slope of 1, which means as my x values are approaching a, my y values are also approaching a. Uh, this is what allows us to actually just do the substitution. So here, I can go ahead as x approaches a. Oh, this is actually a typo. That should say a. So my limit of, as x approaches negative 6 of x is negative 6. These next few properties, I'm not going to really go through graphically. Uh, these are involving operations. And the operations, uh, add, subtract, multiply, divide, constant multiples, uh, work pretty well. Uh, so it's just the idea that, say, here, I've, this is the technically called the sum and difference property of limits. If I'm adding or subtracting two functions, I can split the limit up into it pieces. I do the limit of each piece and add or subtract those. So if I have the limit as x approaches 2 of x plus 7, well, that's the same as the limit as x approaches 2 of x plus the limit as x approaches 2 of 7. And using our two previous properties, limit as x approaches 2 of x, well, I can just substitute in, and that'll be 2. And then the limit of a constant is that constant. So we get 9. Uh, quite honestly, this is not one where I would typically use. This is one that we kind of do without actually thinking that we're doing it. Uh, because I could have just plugged 2 in for x here. But the sum and difference property is what allows us to do that. Uh, similarly with multiplication, uh, if I'm taking the limit of a product, I can break that up and do the product of the limits of each piece. Uh, this is where being able to do substitution for limits involving powers really comes in. Uh, so the limit as x approaches a of x times x would be the limit as x approaches a of x times the limit as x approaches a of x. So then using our second property, that would just be a times a, which is a squared. And that right there allows us now to work with polynomials. Because I can do powers of x, I can add or subtract each, each term. Some smaller ones here. Uh, this property we actually use a lot consciously, uh, whereas the sum and difference, the product, and even if you look down at number six with the quotient, those we kind of just do without thinking. This one is the constant multiple. And it's the idea that if I'm taking the limit of a product, but one of those is a constant, this is kind of a shortcut for property uh, two or property one and property four together. But we are going to take this constant and move it outside. 
uh, and so here the limit as x approaches negative 4 of 3x would be 3 times the limit as x approaches negative 4 of x. But then the limit as x approaches negative 4 of x is negative 4. And 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. And so from properties 1 through 5, this now allows us to do uh, anything, the substitution itself. The last property here is the quotient property for limits. Uh, this one honestly doesn't get used very much. Um, but it's the idea that as long as my denominator is not zero, then the limit of a quotient would be limited as x approaches a of f of x over the limit as x approaches a of g of x. And the reason this doesn't get used as very often is this part right here. We have to make sure that the bottom cannot be zero. Uh, and it's not just when at a, it's at any time the, uh, that's close to g of a. Um, because remember, we ne x never reaches a, we approach it. Now, if we're far away from a, it's okay, but close to a, we have to make sure that the bottom, our denominator is never zero because that's just not possible. And so these properties, most of them get used without thinking. Uh, this is just reinforcing the easiest way to evaluate a limit is by substitution. Just plug in the value that the variable is approaching and get your constant so solution.